It's buckets all the way down. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The ending is never the ending is never the ending is never the ending is never the ending. I've got to run past the bucket, unfortunately. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Is it its buckets all the way down? Always has been. Stanley was so I love bad at following like directions. It's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. Oh, no, 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 you can't... Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices, and to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. 
Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. I was unfortunately muted uh, as soon as I returned. I looked at all of the forklifts in that room and asked who put all these buckets here. But unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't work if you lead up to it like that, you know? Caution, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Almost there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. Okay. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just yep. follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he yep. entered the door on his left. Perfect. No! Why did you do that? Huh? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Uh, yeah, things got a bit screwy here. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, did... Okay. Stanley entered the door on his left. Maybe I have to shut the door. Okay, so it won't let me disobey? Fine. Please acknowledge I've gone through the right room. I, just, I did it. I did what you asked. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Good lord, I don't know if this was in the original, but it's not a bucket ending. Oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. 
That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Second chance. All right. We've got this. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two mm. open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, no. Uh... I think it's this one? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Dang it. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly... Third chance. ...and okay. always putting the story right. first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm pretty... I'm almost... No! Why did you do that? Again? Quickly, hurry back. Okay, I'll do it this time behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here. Yeah, it worked. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping him coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That's not the executive bathroom anymore. Hmm. I've forgotten where the other areas that it wants you to go are. Oh, right, different office. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Not shock, run, run, fire. Not shock, run, run, fire. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. Just in case it actually I'm sorry, was reading. Is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 115. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. 
I need this. The story needs him. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. How long? You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. This is probably a begin the game again kind of situation, if I had to guess. Or not, the game will do it for me. So that did say, uh, well, it gave us the credits for the Ultra Redux, Ultra, I have forgotten, Ultra Deluxe version. Uh, I'm not so certain how many more endings elude me at this point. Obviously, there's finding the final figurine. Who turned up the bumpscosity so hard? I like bumpscosity as much as the next person, but a hundred is quite a lot, wouldn't you say? All right, I apologize about that. My my bad. I I got a little wacky with the bumpscosity. Twelve is a much more reasonable now. Hint: It's a lot, as in there's a lot more d d still new. I'm glad to hear that. Ah, the Wait, no. Trace of an old friend, a weathered companionship that stands the test of time. I think I need the bucket right Stanley now. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. And this was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no. Never mind. The bucket was I'm on the way to unplug the phone with the bucket. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. Of course not. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. Yes, they can. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Which bucket are you even talking about? There's a bunch of buckets in here. I'm riding on a bucket. That's a bucket. That's a, this is constructed out of many small buckets. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the. F Whoa! Hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's they funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Mm -hmm. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then, Spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half. 
pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles, all of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Huh, finally, I was wondering when he was gonna really step it up and the narrator's just been lagging this whole time, not funny at all. Doesn't know how to speak between 13.5 seconds and 18. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous, how absurd, what a hilarious concept. The king of comedy, that's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Unfortunately, I'm done with the streamy. Sleep is madly needed. Please take good care of your buckets, everyone. Sleep well, Danny. Oh, I no longer have the uh, sticker of a bucket on my bucket. It's still my property, though. Undeniably that. Four, five, and yeah, here we are. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. I heard the sound of three doors opening. Oh. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, 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 what's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. You I must have spell your name. the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and re-watch that instructional video again. Are you going to play it again? Yes, In full? surely. That will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Where did I go wrong? Here we go. You ready? 
When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you, um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. <laughs> well, let me try to You're the king of comedy. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No, still not, it, is it the delivery? Pale with shame, pale with shame, pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away you from have to spell your name at the start Stanley of these. I don't get that we're doing a joke. The whole point of this. I'm just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Huh? Oh, a new hallway. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better coach. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I think I haven't done the get crushed while holding the bucket? I also haven't gone somewhere red and blue yet, but we can't do that while we're holding the bucket. I keep accidentally picking up the bucket immediately at the very start. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Yes, yes we did. Another look at the executive bathroom. We're taking executive dumps. Nothing to it. Alright. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was Just happened to know that one. Along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. I haven't done many retreats, I don't think. That one clearly doesn't work as soon as I hit that. Do you want like hints or something on uh, endings you can get? Uh, things, things that I... Uh, oh, hey, we've got the sticker back on the bucket again. Uh, things that I am exceptionally likely to miss and large areas of new content that I have not yet seen. Yeah, I'm more than happy to have a little bit of a steer in the right direction. Control facility. That seems like a bad idea. It's time to escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. I guess I could also try and escape the... The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. A lot of it is here is a step that leads to an ending. Fair. The more abstract the step can be, I guess, the better bit. I'm... This this is the kind of game that, like, as a solo player off-camera, I would be exploring for, you know, 10 hours and holding in different areas for a really long period of time. But I also have to worry about the, the viewing experience of it as well. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the Bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself. 
and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Bye. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. The ending of the bucket parable. It was I wouldn't have been surprised if that said the, the bucket parable. It's a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. The bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within, a cavernous void. But through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched and substantiated. Knowledge of the bucket and its history will only not is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? Here's my question, will you play this game again? And if so, will it be on stream? Uh, my goal, mentally, was to uh, complete all of the content in the Redux here in this stream. Um, if we're like five hours away from doing that, then I'll probably do it over the course of two streams, which will be next week, this time. Uh, if we're uh, further than, sorry, if we're shorter than that, I'd probably just make my way around it. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? How do I get that bucket? I'm gonna have to jump from out there. I have to find the illusory wall leading that way. Uh, 25 buckets, a photograph, of 25 buckets, the greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The photographer experienced catatonic shock for several weeks as a result of the euphoria from exposure to this many buckets at once. 25. We're not close, I think you got like four hours left, maybe. For real? A bucket with two handles. This bucket is depicted as having two handles. Such a design has never been created in real life, having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. Looks like the rest of this is written in Elvish, basically. If for real, I have like four hours left, then uh, maybe I'll end this ending and come back at another point. Inferno Bucket! A replica of the Inferno Bucket, which was in the medieval era so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another in control of it. Billions died. And yet in spite of it all, the simple fact remains. No one can control a bucket. The Stress Bucket, an analogy. Ah. Presented without commentary. Oh. So a few chair exhibits around this area. <gasps> what cave drawing? While we know that buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of the bucket by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. Oh, they managed to plug up a leak in the ceiling with it. Oh, it's so useful. You can do that. 
and other stuff, I'm sure. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between the bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of our reach. This distance inevitably is for our own good. Oh, I wonder if that holds infinite. Bucket? But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Mm? Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. For... 